This is the iPhone 13 Pro, and this is the DJI Osmo Gimbal. Now I've been making a lot of videos about the iPhone's LiDAR sensor, using it for mapping and surveying. But a lot of you have noticed that there's a major problem with this iPhone. Whenever we're recording data using this iPhone, there tends to be a lot of drift that happens over time. This drift and error happens because the iPhone's accelerometer and gyroscopes were not designed for mapping. The main reason the accelerometer sensor was created was to measure the speed at which your phone is traveling. So if you've got like the navigation in your car setup, you can see how fast you're going in comparison to the speed limit. And the gyroscope was set up so that the iPhone can orient itself based on the position that your iPhone is in. So if you selected a YouTube video and you wanted to orient your screen so that it's in landscape mode, the iPhone would automatically doing that just by rotating the phone. And when we're doing mapping work, we're depending on this accelerometer and gyroscope to give us accurate positioning of our phone since the GNSS receiver or the GPS positioning isn't very accurate. And well, that's what leads us to having approximately one foot of error every 200 linear feet of measurements. Now, a lot of this error can be contributed to the way that we're collecting the data with our hands. Our hands are very shaky and most handheld sensors require a lot of compensating to fix this problem. It's the fact that we're correcting too much error to the point that the corrections are not accurate. So in order to fix that, we're going to need to stabilize our data collection. And that is where this gimbal comes into play. Now you can see it's very apparent by having the gimbal, even when I move a little aggressively, the image is pretty stable and very clean. And even if we have movement, the accelerator and the gyroscope are going to have a much easier time correcting that and it's going to give us better data. And so today I wanted to use the iPhone's LiDAR sensor and measure around the house one time using just my hand and the second time using this gimbal. In a previous video, I used the iPhone's LiDAR sensor to do a topographic survey of my entire house. In one of the scans, I started right here on this side of the fence and I scanned all the way around to the other side of the fence. Once we made it to this side of the fence, it almost looked like there was two different fences. That's because the iPhone had drifted the data after holding it in my hand and trying to compensate for all the error. Now the goal for today's video is to start scanning here and by the time we get to this side of the fence, our scan will be better aligned and there won't be as much drift. I'm hoping using the gimbal will be able to increase our level of accuracy and create less drift in the data set. Now today I'm going to be using an app called Sightscape. You can find the link in the description and download it from the App Store. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the app. All right, and now I've launched the app and I can see everything in front of me. All right, I'm over here on the fence. We're gonna start the handheld scan. And you can see the points come in nice and clean. If I push up here, I can actually see a little bit of the camera that'll help guide me to see which points were collected. If I push up all the way, I see my house in comparison to the scan points. Here is the entrance to my house. I'm gonna just keep the camera down. I don't need it on right now. I can definitely see every time I take a step, the phone shaking just a little bit. And I'm sure that's gonna contribute to some degree of error. Get into the entrance of the house. And I'm not trying to go super fast, but I also don't want to go so slow that it's unbearable. So I have to find a happy medium. RGB camera, you can see, okay, we're almost done. Just got this little section right here. And the truth, almighty truth. Scan the last bit of fence. All right, hit stop and complete. Now I called this the hand scan. And if we review it, we can see there's plenty of detail here. I can definitely see where the entrance is and I can definitely see everything that I need to. But what I'm mainly focused about is that fence. And if we move over here to the fence, I can look here and definitely say there's a huge amount of drift. 
not only in distance but also in angle i can see the angle of the house here seems to be going inward rather than going parallel from when we started so this is definitely going to need some adjusting you're going to need to include some additional control and that additional control is going to help you make this data set more accurate but unfortunately from the get-go the raw data is a ton of drift in it and it's really not the best data that we can achieve all right now i put my iphone into the gimbal we're going to try doing this again but hopefully this time it'll be a much more stable scan since we're using the dji osmo gimbal I'm going to tap and start collecting data. You can turn on a little bit of the camera just to see. And I can already tell when I take a step, the camera is not shaking. Or I should say the iPhone is not shaking. I'm gonna keep collecting this data, looks good. And like I said, I'm not gonna move super slow, I'm gonna move at an average speed. I really don't feel as worried about, you know, collecting data because I don't have to worry about accidentally bumping it or um, for any kind of alignment issues due to my hand. Just hope the data comes out as smooth as I think it will. All right, and I'm going to scan up into the front door. Finish up the scan here. And now I've got two scans. One I've called hand scan and the other one I've called gimbal scan so that we can differentiate between the two of them. And the nice thing is about Sightscape is that you're able to tap on the scan and sync it to the cloud. This will allow us to access it on our computers. So let's go ahead and open up our computer and load up both these data sets to compare their accuracies. All right, beautiful weather out here today, so we're gonna do all of our processing right here in our backyard. What I'm gonna start by doing is going to sitescape.ai and logging into my account. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and load up my first scan. And right here, you can see the hand scan. I'm gonna go ahead and load the scan. We can pan around the project and take a look at how our scan turned out. If I come here to the download file, I have the option to download this as an RCP file. This is a really great function from Sitescape because we're able to export in an extension that AutoCAD recognizes. Usually we'd have to take the file as an LAS and convert it into recap and then bring it into AutoCAD Civil 3D. But with Sitescape, we can automatically just bring the file into Civil 3D without having to do any conversions. So I'm gonna pick RCP. While the scan is downloading, I'm going to go ahead and load up our gimbal scan. I'm going to select gimbal scan, and now again, we can view the scan here in the Sitescape website. I'm going to click on download file and select the RCP file extension. Once the downloads are complete, I can go into my file explorer, go into download folder, and see both the hand scan and the gimbal scan are in a zipped folder. I'll extract both of these, and so now I have the RCP point clouds for both data sets. Now we're going to load up AutoCAD Civil 3D. Inside of Civil 3D, I'm going to go under the Insert tab and select the Import point cloud. I'll start with importing the hand scan. I'll select Hand Scan RCP, and if we take a look here, we can see the RGB values of all the points. And if I zoom into here where the fence is, we can see we have some major drift problems here from the starting point to the ending point. Remember, this is the same fence, so really we shouldn't be seeing this much drift. But unfortunately, that's the result of using the iPhone without any kind of stabilization. I'll go into the color map and I'm gonna change this point cloud to blue. Now let's go ahead and import the gimbal scan. And again, we can see the RGB values, and when I zoom into the fence, we can see that this is a much better result. We'll do the same thing, changing the color mapping to green, and that way we'll be able to see the blue point cloud and the green point cloud, and know which scan belongs to which data set. Now I'm gonna use the polyline command to extract features out of these point clouds. And I'll start to extract the side of the house as well as the fence. We'll start by extracting points off of the blue point cloud, and once we've done that, I'll select both of these point clouds and change their color to blue. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, extracting the side of the house and the fence in the green point cloud. Now we've extracted those features, we'll change the color to green. 
and now we can just freeze the point clouds and get them out of the way. Now using the dimension tool, I'm gonna find the error in the location of the fence as well as the angular error of the building. Remember, the building lines should be parallel to each other, but they're not. So by finding the angular error, we can find out how much angular drift happened in our scan. We'll start with the hand scan in blue, and as you can see, our error in the distance between the fences is 4.08 feet. And when I select the angular dimension, we have an angular drift of eight degrees. Now let's do the gimbal scan in green. The fence distance has an error of 0.21 feet and the angular distance for the building is two degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring these two data sets next to each other so that we can take a look and see what an extreme difference there is between using the gimbal and not using it. Now the perimeter of the house is about 200 feet and with all the turns and jogs of the house we're finding there's about four linear feet of error using just my hand and only two tenths error using the gimbal. That means that there's an incredible amount of error that is being compensated using the gyroscope and the accelerometer when you're using just your hand and using a device like this like a gimbal to stabilize your scan is going to give you much better raw data inside of your point cloud. I hope you guys found today's video informative. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.